Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video we are diving in to how you can prepare for the mock exams that you've probably got coming up in either December or January. So if you're aiming for those top grades A's and A stars then you're in the right place. Make sure to check the description for all of the resources I'm going to be talking about including my detailed long-term revision planner that you can follow, the free mock exams that you can get and also the mega ultimate biology study club where you get to attend 10 live lessons every month with me and other qualified teachers to really boost your grade. But for now, let's get into it. So step one is creating a structured revision timetable. Yes, this always splits the crowds on whether you love them or hate them. Personally, I absolutely love it. I still use a daily schedule to help me keep on track. Now, even if you don't love it, there's still different versions and levels of structure you can use, but you need to have some kind of plan. So many students do underestimate the importance of having either a structured plan, list or timetable so that you can then break up what you need to do for each subject in your mocks to make sure you've actually accounted for when you're going to revise each subject from your A-levels and each topic within each subject. And not only that, as you probably know from my videos, I'm always talking about your revision should be understanding, remembering, exam practice. You need to put that in your revision timetable. So you might have biology, biological molecules, understanding, and that is one of your blocks and you might say you're going to spend 30 minutes on that. You might have another block where you say biology, remembering, cells, and that's the sort of thing you do. What A level it is, which topic it is, and which of the three stages you're at. Understanding, remembering, or exam practice. And remember, consistent hard work and effort is the key to getting those top grades. It's not easy, it's not always fun, but that is the trick to how to get there, consistent hard work. So by creating and sticking to a revision timetable like that, it will make a huge amount of difference. And if you do want to have help with that, I've got this video here about creating a revision timetable and it links to the template in the description also. Step number two is active recall and active revision technique. I've talked about this so much in my videos and in fact all of my revise with me videos you get to do this active recall revision with me. Active recall means you are testing yourself and not just passively sitting listening to information on a video a podcast or reading a book because all of that is good to help you get a better understanding initially but you're not actually checking do you remember the information and can you apply it to exam questions. So it's so important that you are testing your knowledge with flashcards, or my active recall workbook or blurting or even testing each other as a group. Now because I know just how important that stage is for members of the biology study club I really help support them with this. By number one they get access to my flashcards for free as being members. Number two I do weekly exam practice with them and number three they can submit their own questions to me that I can mark and number four Four, I set them monthly challenges to check that they are keeping on top of their revision. So if you do want to join that club to have more support from me with your active recall, then the link is in the description below. So essentially with active recall, the more you test yourself, the more you strengthen those neurons in your brain, those neural pathways, and that creates long-term memories. So as a reminder, you could do flashcards, blurting, active recall, creating mind maps is also another really great strategy for that. Part three for your revision, is practice questions. This step is non-negotiable and it cannot be skipped. If it is skipped, it's going to have a huge impact on the number of marks you're able to get. Exam practice is so important for multiple reasons. First of all, you get familiar with the types of questions that repeatedly come up for certain topics. You also get used to the time conditions, how long it takes you to read, process and understand a question. You get practice of can you write your answer quick enough? Enough, and you also get practice of seeing what types of answers come up for those questions so you can learn some key mark scheme points. Now because this step is so vital I've created a whole new range of freebies to help you this year. This year I've also added along with my skills bundle and assessment bundle of free exam questions you can now download my 2024 mock papers which I have available a year 12 version, a year 13 version for AQA and OCR. A. 
day. And I've actually made a few variations covering different topics because I know you won't all literally be up to the same point. So that is on my freebies tab at missestrut.co.uk. Definitely download that, have a go at the entire paper, or if you'd rather just do it topic at a time. I've also released a new set of papers which are end of topic tests. So all of those are on my website for free. Have a go to start improving. Number four is prioritizing focusing on your weak areas. Once you've done some exam questions and even just from testing your memory with flashcards, it might hopefully start to become apparent which parts you're finding harder to remember, harder to understand, or the types of exam questions you keep losing marks on. That's where you should now focus more of your time because if that's where you're losing the marks, if you can improve at that, that's where you're gonna gain the marks. So try and avoid sitting back into that comfortable routine of testing yourself on everything or what you already know because let's face it, it's a good boost to confidence if you're doing questions or flashcards that you keep getting correct. It does boost your confidence, but also waste your time. You already know that. You need to be challenging yourself, doing the uncomfortable hard work. That is how you're going to improve. And the final thing to point out is focusing on mindset and your well-being because exam stress is real, whether it is an end of unit test, a mock exam, your actual A-levels. It can cause a lot of stress and anxiety and that is completely normal. So you need to make sure you're putting measures in place so that you can manage those feelings so they don't become so intense tense that it's overwhelming. So to try and manage that, make sure that when you're doing your revision timetable, you are also scheduling in rest, relaxation, and some social time as well. And when you are relaxing, try and make sure you are completely switching off from work. One thing I'm terrible at, because I always think, right, it's my rest time. I'm going to watch something on TV now, but then I end up, I don't know, doing something on my laptop simultaneously to try and maximize my time. But that then means you're not actually having the rest that your brain needs and that you need to make sure that you've don't burn out. Another key strategy is if you do find you are struggling, talk to people, whether that is one of your teachers, your tutor, someone in your family, friends, but just talk to people if you are struggling and ask for help if you need it. So I hope those strategies help you have a better idea now of how to prepare for your mock exams coming up in a month or maybe in two months. And also an idea of a whole range of resources that you can get to help you with A-level biology. Whether it's my bundles of free exam questions, my my revision guides, or if you want the ultimate support package, then the Biology Study Club. And if you do come and join, make sure you say hello and I'll drop you a message and say hello. But for now, that's it. And if you do want to start working on revision, then check out one of these Revise Me videos next.